The Pride Lands of Africa tell a story that has inspired countless people growing up. From the iconic characters to the intense moments, there is so much to be learned here. One lesson we can learn from the main character Simba is how to deal with grief. Spoiler alert for the two people that haven't seen Lion King, Simba's father Mufasa dies. So what does Simba do in reaction to this? And what can we apply in our lives when we go through a traumatic event? It starts off with the initial emotional reaction. Simba is completely in shock and is processing the sight of his dead father before him. This is where we feel completely irrationally sad, depressed, or upset. This can feel crippling and literally induce a sort of physical pain within our bodies. Know that this is completely natural and that it's okay to feel what you need to right now. If you can, as soon as possible, try to lower your heart rate as best you can. When traumatic events happen, our emotional state is extremely heightened and this makes memories very potent. Our brains can burn powerful neural pathways that eventually turn into emotional triggers for us. And this is where PTSD can come from. If you can lower your heart rate soon after the event through something like breathing techniques or support from loved ones, you can significantly lessen the emotional charge of the new neural pathway being formed in your brain. This will significantly reduce the chance of you having PTSD from the event. Unfortunately for our friend Simba, he didn't do that. Simba was tricked by his uncle Scar into believing he was the one at fault, causing him to run away. The emotional burden of Mufasa's death and the weight of what Simba perceived ultimately led him to want to escape his problems. This is where humans can fall to substances like drugs and alcohol to try and escape or run from their natural feelings. Numbing the pain or trying to escape it blindly are extremely unhealthy coping mechanisms that won't help your brain properly process all the emotions it needs to so you can move forward. Simba had to learn this the hard way. Soon after these events, we then meet everyone's favorite meerkat and warthog, Timon and Pumbaa. They take the depressed and broken Simba in to live with them in paradise. They teach him the phrase, Hakuna Matata, which means no worries. Although it makes for a great theme song and a funny phrase to wash down some bugs to, it's actually really bad advice when trying to deal with traumatic events and grieve properly. By adopting a no worries mindset, you can adopt a numbing mindset that ignores the emotions you need to feel and buries them. This is pure denial and can manifest in the form of toxic positivity. Life is about the good and the bad. It's about a healthy balance. To be emotionally strong and confident, we need to look these emotional demons straight in the eyes and go through the pain. Lean on friends. Go to therapy, talk about it, and give yourself some alone time as well to sit with the emotions and feel them as powerfully as you need to. There's no right or wrong way to feel, and there's no timeline to this. Some of you might be expecting me to reference the five stages of grief. This is a model that was created in 1969 by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, and these days it's a little outdated and we've learned a lot more about the topic of grief. Most psychologists and researchers agree that grief is experienced differently from person to person, and that you can skip around these stages or move through them at different speeds than others. Go through it at your own pace, but just make sure you're utilizing healthy coping mechanisms. Simba spends years in the oasis with Timon and Pumbaa and appears to have gotten a little too comfortable. His childhood crush Nala shows up and they rekindle their long lost love. Nala urges Simba to come back, but 
He has become so lazy and comfortable, he can't even process the idea of going back to Pride Rock to take it back from the corrupt leadership of Scar. Nala returns to the drought-stricken Pride Lands and the wise baboon Rafiki becomes aware of Simba's presence. This is where everything changes. Let me know in the comments below if any of these tips have resonated with you so far. For anyone that's new here, my name's Jeff and my goal is to make psychology make sense. If you've been enjoying the content so far, any support would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for hanging out. Rafiki mentions Simba's father and Simba becomes insatiably curious. A frustrated chase ensues and the two run through the thick brush at night with Simba hoping to find Mufasa alive and well. Rafiki stops by the water and presses Simba to look at his reflection. What he sees is less than ideal. A broken spirit with lost hope. Someone who has gotten far too comfortable with running from the past and using escapes to numb the pain. Too many people get caught up in this for too long and they change the entire course of their lives. They throw away the gift of time and stop living. A downtrodden Simba tells Rafiki that's not his father, yet Rafiki urges him to look harder at the reflection. Simba then sees Mufasa. He sees the king that lives within him Rafiki was able to provide the clarity and wisdom Simba needed to actually address his trauma. Mufasa appears in a vision, telling Simba he needs to remember his purpose in life. For a brief moment, Simba falls back into his depressed, self-doubting mindset. The exchange here is nothing short of brilliant. Simba says, I know what I have to do, but Going back means I'll have to face my past. I've been running from it for so long. Rafiki then mashes him over the head. Simba asks what that was for, and Rafiki happily says, what does it matter? It's in the past. Simba responds with a painful, yeah, but it still hurts though. With Rafiki finally stating that the past can hurt, but you can either run from it or learn from it. As he tries to hit Simba again, and misses. This was a critical moment in Simba's development. He had a choice here. He decided to make the right move. He learned that he does have control over his emotions and that he can actively choose to face his fears and move forward with the trauma. Simba finally decided it's time to deal with the last stage of his grief. The main lesson here is that you never want to run from your past or block out things because they seem unbearable. You have to work through them in healthy ways and learn from them. We need to become a stronger and wiser person from the previous battles we've endured that have beaten us down. But what happens next? The rest is history. Simba reclaims the throne as king and restores order and happiness to his kingdom in the Pride Lands. Grieving is a painful and terrifying thing to move through sometimes. It physically hurts us to our cores and makes us not want to move forward. Understand that you are fully entitled to feel what you naturally feel immediately after a traumatic event and that there's no timeline when it comes to this stuff. If you can, try your best to lower your heart rate soon after the traumatic event. Don't look to substances or try to escape and be sure not to numb the pain or become too comfortable with stagnancy. You can either run from your past or you can learn from your past. Understand that we don't move away from grief. We move forward with it. And in time, it becomes easier to bear the scar because we ourselves become stronger and wiser. Grief is a healthy yet painful part of life. As Vision puts it, what is grief if not love persevering? If you're interested in other topics in psychology, be sure to check out my last video on the psychology of sex. So for all things psychology to help you think, feel, and perform better, stay tuned right here on Psychology of Living.